good Sunday afternoon. We've uh, got up and went to church this morning, and as usual, we've we've come over to my mother's house, my childhood home, uh, to have lunch. And I'd like to introduce you to my mother, Josephine Smith. She is the founder of the feast, so to speak. She bottles up our honey. Uh, her and dad had sold honey for years and years. Um, absolutely a blessing to have her here with us today. She's going to show you how that she jars this honey off and then we're going to take a uh, re refractometer and check the moisture levels in the honey. Kind of show y'all how to do that. It might be something you're interested in. Um, Mama, if you would, are you ready to run a jar of honey? I'm ready. All right, well. Now she's the one that started this all, her and Paul, right? Her and your dad? Absolutely. I, 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 we won't speculate or guess at how many jars of honey this lady has ran in some 50, 60 years, but uh, she has definitely filled a jar or two, haven't you, Mama? Yes, I have. <laughs> how many years would you say? Oh, goodness. Maybe 30? At least 30. At least 30. You well, let's say 30 not, years would be 1990, right? You're not taking into consideration that, that I'm almost 54. Oh, well. <laughs> you have been filling jars a long time. Yeah, and it wasn't this easy either when we started. How'd you start? Well, I, don't ask me that. <laughs> well, people don't know. They only know this way. They don't know how it originally got, how you had to do it before all this. I took the, the squeezed the wax, the honey out of the wax with my hands. And then got put it, run it over into a, a cheesecloth thing to get it strained out. And it took a long time. <laughs> so, after, so after you mashed it with your hands. Yes, after then I you, mashed then it Then you with poured that hands. through cheesecloth to do the straining. Yes. And then at that point, you went back and had to jar it. Yes, yes. And, and then y'all uh, just kind of word of mouth, people found out that uh, dad was keeping bees and that you was putting honey in jars for sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came from... Well, we didn't have it for sale. We hadn't advertised or anything. They just kept coming wanting honey. <laughs> so he kept getting more bees. But before long, you, you had a little extra money coming in. Yes, um, we did. Go back to the, to the first jar that you can remember selling. What'd that jar of honey cost? Oh, I... I don't have any idea. In fact, we gave most of it away at first. Well, just, it, just to our friends. Is it fair to say, I think the earliest time that I saw money change hands for a quart of honey, it was about $5. Well, it might have been, yeah. People, people would uh, not be okay with that now, Mama. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. Uh, it's a it's a it's a labor of love to begin with. There's work in it, isn't there? A lot of work to it. But Johnny loved and it, didn't Johnny he? Johnny loved it, every bit of it. Now, when it came to bottling, how much did he love that? Oh, he didn't. <laughs> Is, no, he is, did the hard work. Is it safe to say that uh, the honey came in and hit the porch, and it oh. was kind of on you then? Yeah. At that point, yeah, it was on me. I well, see you've got your system here. You've got your yeah, gate. You won't You're do. fine. You've got your gate where you can lock it. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'm going to slide one of your jars over here and we'll get a, a little dollop of it and put it on the refractometer and tell the folks a little bit about this. I'm going to borrow you one of your toothpicks. Joseph, now what year did Johnny start keeping bees? Do you remember? He had bees from the time we were first married. What year which was that? Was in '56. Okay. Now did his did his dad keep bees? 
Well, what got him started? Do you remember? He was just by himself mainly. He stayed with his uh, grandmother and uh, just liked to go out in the woods and be by himself. And when he found a bee tree, well, he got he would cut it down and and get him up to have him beehive started, or or else he would go back to the tree and get the honey. Hmm. Um, if he didn't. I guess that was while he was still young that he did that. Well, so I know he did a lot of beehives he was coursing just, bees to find them. Well, yeah, yeah, and he knew he knew what to do. Uh, he learned by himself, though. He, he was kind of a man of the woods, anyway, yes, wasn't he? Was. he? <laughs> hmm. All right, Corinne, can you tell what I've got going on here, or you, where you can see this? We have a refractometer. We carry these at Central Beekeeper Supply. What we're wanting to find out is the moisture content in the honey. So if the honey bees have not capped a cell, but yet we end up spinning some that was not capped into the capped honey, typically your capped honey will wash your capped honey is dry enough to absorb the extra moisture in that comb honey that was not so with that being said i'm going to load a dollop here a small one on the refract okay. hang on let me get this i'm haven't gotten this stick completely down yet well if you was pushing buttons that could have been what happened Okay, so we load a droplet of honey onto the slide. You try to do it without foam and without interference from anything else, such as breath, moisture, moisture content in the air. We close down our slide. You see it on the prism. Now it's made a circle, it's thinned that out. What we're doing is now we're going to look into the refractometer in ambient light and, and it is going to refract the water from solid honey and pick up the water refraction that's in that honey and separate that in the finder. So when I look into the refractometer, I have a bricks reading which is our substance we have a water percentage which is what we're after so this honey between a defined blue line and a white line is 18 percent moisture content if you can it's as simple as googling it these days but you can google um, excessive water content in honey where will fermentation start and which by the way the fermentation is the only concern you have with jarring and bottling honey. Um, in time, if the water content is too high in the honey, it will start to ferment, build a gas, and in some cases, it's been known to blow the lids off of these containers. The honey at that point is too green to sustain a shelf life. So the lower, the better. Anything really and truly, if it can be up to 20%, um, if eaten, if it is going to be consumed in a relatively short time. Uh, 18 and lower, you're hitting in that margin where it has a forever shelf life. So I don't know, I would like to hold this refractometer. This is just a shot in the dark. And I don't know if it will even show this, uh -uh. but it would be great oh, wait, if yep. it would. Now, I'm interfering with the camera operator. Yeah, and where the blue line is, there are 18. Maybe Jason can make this look good, right there. So that's what you just saw what I see when I look into the refractometer. I call that 18. You may have to adjust the eyepiece. I probably can't see it.
Two. Oh, there it is. There you got it. Yeah. So, so yeah. we're we're perfectly fine. We knew in reality that we had Jeez, why does it do? a good dry enough honey to do this. We didn't run anything that was not capped. Um, just this now. is just an interesting instrument for y'all to know is available if you have questions about your moisture content. Joe Snell, what, did y'all ever have any that uh, fermented on you or that you remember? Not that I remember. Johnny ever tested with that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just skill and knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Don't pull it if it's not capped. That's pretty safe. That's your safest bet, isn't it, Mother? Just yes. run it when it's all capped. Yes. Over over time, you saw a lot of honey come in. You've seen absolute drums of honey run on your porch. You've seen years where there wasn't, wasn't hardly any. ten buckets of honey there. run. Um, that's kind of the way life is. We don't we get what we get, and we don't throw a fit, according to my my daughter. Um, it's that life goes on, and we continue to wonder what the camera operator is doing <laughs> at this moment. Catch your back around. <laughs> and now you're back with us today. All right, we wanted to share a little bit of Sunday's activities with you. Um, we're having a big time. We hope you are. We're enjoying time with, with family, uh, doing what we do as a family. And until we see you again, roll that beautiful bee footage. Thank you, Mother. Great job. Well,